I am a black woman, tall as a cypress, strong beyond all definition, still defying place and time and circumstance, assailed, impervious, indestructible, look on me and be renewed. I was 13 years old, growing up in Sumter, South Carolina, trying to find my way in the world as a young poet who didn't know how to be a poet just yet. And it was a really important time. There were all kinds of books and art being published, being made, being created in the world. And I had no real access to those things here in the Deep South. But I was being sent away to the North to visit my aunts who lived in Newark and Vauxhall and East Orange, New Jersey. And every time I went up for a visit, I would steal into one of those corner stores and I would subversively buy little broadsides by Haki Marubuti and Nikki Giovanni and Sonia Sanchez and Mari Evans. And when I read those words that I read when I started, I said to myself, one day I would like to grow up into those words and become the poet that I so long to become. And so those words were written out of the poetry book that I found and placed in the journal book and became a mantra for me when I was one of my mantras when I was trying to figure out how to do this. And so I wanted to thank Mari Evans for not just writing those words, but for being on the road for so long, steadfast, determined, brilliant, insightful, a great mirror for me as a young poet growing up in America in the 1970s and 1980s. And I didn't want this celebration of Mari Evans's life to happen without me making the time and finding, um, finding my way to the conference in order to say, Mari Evans, many of us, many of us have nibbled on your words for years and years and years in order to become the writers that we have become. Without you, I don't know, I don't know who we would have become. So I thank you. Um, we celebrate you from all corners of the globe and know that even if we're not in the room today, um, we, are, we are saying your name, speaking your name, and reading your words that have long been embedded in our heart. Thank you so much. I think, I think um, if we listen to our core personality, who we are is essential and spiritual, I believe. I try to write about my sense of the human condition, and um, I don't worry about it being deliberately political because it's so inextricably, I think that's the word, mm -hmm. connected to the society that it's going to be political. Mm -hmm. uh, Mari Evans was born on July 16, 1923, in Toledo, Ohio. Although Evans' first collection of poetry, Where Is All the Music, wasn't published until 1968, Evans began writing from a young age, noting particularly her father as her biggest supporter. As a young woman, Evans established contact with Langston Hughes by first sending a collection of 125 of her early poems titled Indisputably Me to him. Hughes lauded her work and sent selections from her collection to poet Ezra Pound for review. Pound referenced Evans in an article for the New York Times causing Evans to gain critical attention. Well, absolutely. 
you know, I mean, without that um, spiritual component, uh, I doubt if we'd be able to, to do our or do things we we'll create. I don't know. Evans was thrust into the national spotlight in 1970 when her second collection of poetry, I Am a Black Woman, was published by William Morrow and Company. Her title poem became an anthem for many female scholars and writers of the black arts movement. Although Evans has been known to write on black arts themes, she also writes on personal or individual issues such as love, acceptance, and loss, and works not to essentialize black experience as a monolith. I deliberately try to pass along or pay forward whatever I have learned about the African presence in antiquity, and because I don't believe that there's much of that in the average classroom. And um, the more digging you do, you find how central, you know, the African presence was. Socrates studying with the priests of the African mystery system and all that, you know, and if you know about that, you're comfortable with it, and if, I mean, if you've read, read some of the works, it's just important to, that we try to get things as straight as possible. Although largely considered a poet, Evans has written children's books, essays, and theater pieces, composed musicals, edited scholarly works, and dabbled in photography and painting. She has also served as a faculty member at several prestigious universities, including Indiana University of Purdue at Indianapolis, University of Indiana Bloomington, Northwestern, Cornell, Spelman College, Washington University in St. Louis, among others. And she has garnered several awards, such as the John Hay Whitney Fellowship, the Coretta Scott King Award, the Woodrow Wilson Grant, and the NEA Creative Writing Award. She served on the National Endowment for the Arts from 1969 to 1970 and wrote, created, produced, and hosted a local television program for Indianapolis called The Black Experience from 1969 to 1973. Today, we celebrate the literary legacy of Mari Evans. I am a black woman. The music of my song, some sweet arpeggio of tears, is written in a minor key, and I can be heard humming in the night, can be heard humming in the night. I saw my mate leap screaming to the sea, and I, with these hands, cup the life breath from my issue in the cane break. I lost Nat's swinging body in a rain of tears and heard my son scream all the way from Anzio for peace he never knew. I learned Da Nang and Poor Chop Hill in anguish. Now my nostrils know the gap and these trigger tired fingers seek the softness in my warrior's beard. I am a black woman, tall as a cypress, strong, beyond all definition, still defying place, and time, and circumstance, assailed, impervious, indestructible. Look on me and be renewed. Mm -hmm.